This is the Crowl Puncher Breaker and mine's in the marine finish or silver to most of us. It's also in the walnut stock, not the synthetic stock. And here comes my review of this rifle. Watch on. So many of you have told me to get one of these, so I have. This is the Mark II version with improved accuracy. I bought mine from Braces of Bristol and they retail anywhere from 500 pounds down to around 430, depending on your spec. It comes with two magazines and a single shot tray, fill probe and some spare O-rings. Mine is the walnut stock version, but as the box says, a synthetic version is also available. And that stock is a lovely chunk of wood, smooth all over with nice cutouts for the fingers to grip onto. Brass inserts for the included removable Picatinny rail and at the end is a rubber shoulder pad. The gun is a bullpup design with the trigger forward of the action just there. And the action is at the rear. Side lever action with the opening being spring loaded and a resettable safety and power adjuster for the transfer port just there. Mine is the silver coated finish, but black is also available. A metal muzzle brake at the front, which threads onto the barrel, which is a crowl one. The 280cc air cylinder sits under that barrel and fills from a probe to 200 bar and you've got a rotating dust cap on the front to protect that hole. Mine is a 177, so the magazine is a 14 shot plastic rotary style one and included is a plastic single shot tray. Plastic sliding cheek piece on the top that can be a little stiff and a Picatinny rail above for attaching your scope to. And my scope is a CV Life 6x24x50 AOG, which I bought from Amazon for 39 quid delivered. It's put over a thousand pellets downrange so far, and it works really well. Actually, it's better than some scopes five times the price. Lifespan, who knows? But for 39 quid, why not? Now I am using high mounts. The cheap piece offers very little adjustment, You'll have to use high mounts on that cheap piece, otherwise you're going to see as much as Stevie Wonder through that scope. And when you fire the gun, it goes bang, so you will need a moderator on the end of it. So I stuck a Hugget on mine. Mr. Hugget sent me a mug, nice mug. And today's drink is hot chocolate. Yum. The trigger is, well, a trigger. It's heavy. And yes, I've had the stock off to adjust it. I give this bolt here three quarters of a turn to ease it. If you turn that bolt too much, it stops the safety engaging. But if you stop the safety engaging, that trigger becomes awesome. If you're a home gunsmith, maybe you could adjust that, but I'm not overriding that safety feature. So it remains a slightly improved trigger out of the box, but it's no match trigger. The other adjustment ports are blank, except for that one. Mess with that, and it simply means the gun won't cock. And then, of course, we have to discuss the name. I mean, why, why, why Delilah would you call a gun the puncher? Who knows? But when I think of the word puncher, I think of the word striker. Striker, 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 striker. We're not allowed to do jokes like that anymore, are we? In fact, I couldn't think of anything worse. I take it black, like my man. No, 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 we need to stop there. But then again, breaker is also a CB term. Breaker, breaker, one nine. Does anyone even still use this thing? Nah, mate, we're all out shooting air guns, innit? The magazine is easy to load. It looks kind of FX style but it's not. Rotate and drop the first one in from the top. Then twist back and load 13 more. Then slot the magazine in from the right, lining up the plastic groove with the cutout in the breech. The single shot tray goes in from the right as well, and then you drop in a pellet and shoot. 
but if you get one in the wrong way round, you ain't getting your fingers in to remove it. You've got to tip it out and try again. And that side lever, well, it's firm and meaningful. Okay, it can be a little stiff, but you do get used to it. And I think mine has eased a little while I've been shooting it. Right, let's do the accuracy with the Crowl Puncher Breaker. Now pay attention because you are gonna learn something if you're thinking about getting or have got one of these rifles, because it really has made me scratch my head. Now, over the last couple of days, all sorts of pellet testing has ensued. I've just, I've just been shooting, shooting, shooting. And these are sort of, you know, the best of my groups that I got. Now, I discovered actually that it kind of likes the JSB lead freeze with the magazine. However, you do get the odd flyer with those. And when you get a flyer, it's not sort of on the paper. It's sort of over there, half a mile. But with the magazine, if you get a good group going, you can get a nice tidy group. It will also shoot the JSB Exact 8.4s. It does like those. I still think those are the best ones for it. But strangely enough, it will also shoot the Super Domes. We don't normally say that, uh, but it does actually like to shoot the Super Domes. However, I, I wasn't entirely happy with the accuracy. I mean, I'm using the magazine, but I'd like to see groups a bit better than that. So I thought, right, let's try the single shot tray. So I started shooting groups with the single shot tray. Now, let's cover this one up. The best group I got with the single shot tray, and these are 14 shots at 25 yards, was that one just there. Now, granted, it is tighter than with the magazine. Absolutely. But I'm thinking, do you know what? I'm still not kind of overly happy with that. And I've listened to so many of you out there. I thought, well, I must be doing something wrong. So I then did the obvious thing. I cleaned the barrel. I spent an hour cleaning that barrel and I couldn't actually get it off the block. So I just rotted it through as many times as I possibly could. And I got it as clean as I could. Now, I then shot 14 more shots with the single shot tray and I got that. So that is the difference between a clean barrel and a dirty barrel. And I then thought to myself, well, hang on a minute, if I've solved the problem with cleaning the barrel, let's try it with the magazine. So I did 14 shots straight away after that, and I got that with the magazine. So clearly, this gun likes the single shot tray, and that was JSB 8.4s. So golden rule with the crowd puncher breaker, keep that barrel clean and use that single shot tray. And at 25 yards, you can put pellet on pellet. And I hope that my accuracy testing has helped you out with this rifle. Carry on. Now the power. Using the JSB 8.4s, I got at best 96 shots from one fill. This is an unregulated rifle. So the power is always at the top of the charge and then lowers as you shoot onwards. So the first 50 are above 700 feet per second, then it drops off. So it's kind of back to the good old days. Know your sweet spot in the middle of the charge and shoot in that range for best accuracy. In the USA, of course, you get more power, but a lower yeah. shot count. Dip over to Pyramid Air or Air Gun Depot who have them. Yeah. You will, of course, get a slight point of aim change when the power drops. So again, it's going to be learning the gun and adjusting your aim to the fill pressure of the rifle. This is a rough and ready target and close range pesting gun. My max rat shot would be 30 yards, but plinking is a doddle out to 50. It will make you smile. Benching on a bipod, it's blinking uncomfortable just not balanced at all and that cheek piece is too hard after 50 consecutive shots there is just so little adjustment on that stock so it's clearly not a bench competition gun but walking and shooting and leaning on stuff it's great while it's weighty that weight helps with stability when you're out in the rough this takes on the hat sands and the gamos of the world it gets you into shooting and will teach you a lot about managing power and expectations linked to that power, which partners with consistency and accuracy. For plinking and basic pest control, this is ideal. And I'm sure once you've got one of these, you'll be buying more expensive rifles in the future. With what I know now, I may have gone with the synthetic lighter version and spent the spare cash on barrel cleaning equipment. 
but you get a lot of gun for your cash. And I'm glad that I now have one of these puncture breakers in my collection. Also, I would suggest that the person that works at Crowl that labels the box and does the manual buys an English dictionary. If you've liked the video and enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe for the latest airgun news. Thanks for watching. Toodaloo.